As we celebrate June Dairy Month, the ST Talks by ST Genetics and Uplevel Dairy Podcast have banded together to shine a bright light on a collection of great dairy stories. We are rooted in the same core value to provide insightful information to the modern day dairy producer and believe sharing these uplifting stories may motivate a new mindset or change for your own dairy story. I'm Peggy Coffeen, host of the Up Level Dairy Podcast, which you can find on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And I'm Laura Demmer, host of ST Talks, which you can find on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and Deezer. In this series, you will hear incredible dairy stories that follow milk along on a journey. From dairy farmers who are opening their doors and inviting consumers in for a seat at their table, to those who work behind the scenes to add value to every molecule of milk, and even a milk drinker who is fueling up to win the race of her life. That's what we have in store for you on ST Talks and the Up Level Dairy Podcast during the special June Dairy Month series. We are joined by a guest today who is working behind the scenes for dairy farmers because she believes in the excellent quality and health benefits of what you are working so hard every day to produce, as well as the untapped potential and power of every molecule of milk. From Dairy Management Incorporated, we have joining us today, Eve Paulett, Senior Vice President of Strategic Intelligence. Welcome to the show, Eve. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm so excited to talk about the opportunities we're seeing and actioning on for dairy today. Yeah, and we are excited to dig into those as well. And before we get into that part of our conversation, just please take a moment, Eve, and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're doing for dairy farmers at DMI. Yeah, so I'm on our strategic intelligence team at DMI, which is our consumer insights and market intelligence and trends team. And i personally lead our foresight practice within that team, which is our future capability that looks five plus years out for industry. So our remit at DMI is to protect and grow trust in sales, but also now and in the future. So what we do is we have a future looking capability that looks at market consumer trend and technology and science trends five plus years out for industry And this capability is designed to provide intelligent strategy and to execute and launch discovery initiatives within our most important priority areas. And one of those that I'm excited to talk about today is health and wellness. Oh, excellent. We are so excited to hear uh, to hear not just what you're working on right now, but how it plays into the five-year picture into the future of, of how dairy and milk can continue to grow, as you said, to grow in um, to grow in sales and to also grow in trust. And so Eve, you have been working on some really cool stuff. And you alluded to this a little bit a few months back when you and I had connected at the High Plains Dairy Conference in Amarillo, Texas, uh, where you shared with a room full of Southwest and High Plains dairy producers about this combination of technology and AI. And so in the AI world and an ST genetics world over by Laura, that's artificial insemination. But today we are talking about artificial intelligence and the application of that. And so Eve, go ahead and just share a little bit about what you are doing in your team to lead this fast forward futuristic look at how we can take milk, look at it at a molecular level and how that's impacting our view and our potential to truly serve health and wellness of our consumers at the highest level possible. What have you been up to Eve? Yeah, I'm happy to talk about what we've been working on. And thank you for the disclaimer on AI and defining AI as artificial intelligence for our listeners today. So whenever I say AI, that's what I mean. Otherwise, this conversation would be taken very differently. Um, (laughs) But first, I want to start with the why. Because if we're looking out into the future and we're executing on the future now and we're focusing on building these on-ramps to accelerating growth for dairy farmers and their families to protect their future, first, we need to focus on where is the consumer at and where is science and technology going. So first, where is the consumer at? And then let's talk about science and technology. So the number one consumer area of disposable income today is health and wellness, Mm -hmm. the number one area above all else. And consumers are expected to spend over $350 billion a year on what they eat and drink 
to address health and wellness needs alone in the United States. But the catch is over 50% of these consumers that want to use food and drink to address health and wellness needs are extremely dissatisfied with the options in the marketplace. And this represents a huge opportunity of over $200 billion in the U.S. alone to fill this gap. That's an incredible growth opportunity for us. But consumers are looking for targeted, for quick and effective solutions for a variety of health conditions. And they're turning to other products to help solve for them. They're also turning to dairy, don't get me wrong, and that's the positive story. But they're also looking at supplements that are making claims that they want to deliver on for certain health needs, such as bone health. And there's a bit of the gap, you know, right now in the entire food industry, not just in dairy, but in R&D investment in health and wellness innovation to go to market faster with those products. And to go to market, of course, you need to formulate those products, but you need the science. You need the science so you can make the claims and you can make the right products with the right combo of ingredients or just take a look at existing products and look at the science out there and, and make claims on those. So we said, what's going on in the world right now? How can we fill in this gap? How can we go to market faster and take advantage of billions of dollars of opportunities for farmers and also solve, most importantly, solve the critical health needs of consumers today, right? Because that's what we do as an industry. We're a health food. We nourish families. We nourish people at every single life stage. And we've been doing this since the dawn of time, right? And so what's happening out there that what can we do to fill this gap? So at the same time that we recognize this gap and did the research to recognize this gap, because what I just cited was DMI consumer research that we did to understand where consumers were at, what the billions of dollars of opportunity were in the health and wellness space if consumers are spending, if that's the number one area where they're spending money, right? And so we looked at science and technology trends and we looked at the acceleration of AI. I'll define it again, artificial intelligence, even though we put the disclaimer in there. Um, it's been a couple of minutes since we, we mentioned the disclaimer, but, um, and, and where things were going. And technologists predict that in the next 10 years, we will see 100 years of progress, technological progress. So that means 10, a decade of progress within a year. So what does that mean? The acceleration of technology is accelerating, right? In ways that we haven't seen. So have you all, have you ever done a time capsule before? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like in high school, they do the time yeah. capsules. And when you graduate, you, you, you are it, 10 right? years after you graduation. Get it wherever, you probably yeah. forget where it is. You have to ask five people and then you go dig it up. So I remember when I was 12, <laughs> I did a time capsule and I wrote, I would love to speak to people in the mirror and call people from my mirror at home because I loved, I loved, you know, I loved making up plays and, you know, like all kids do, right? That's FaceTime. I can call my family who lives overseas on FaceTime and look at them in my mirror <laughs> and talk to them, right? So everything that we all dreamed up as kids, everything that was in the Disney movies or whatever, reference any childhood movie where there was magic, you actually see that being delivered by the tech industry today, for better or for worse, right? And so, so what does that mean for us? Because we're seeing advancement on a level that my 10, 12-year-old self could have never conceptualized, right? I, I mean, even if we were having this has, has anyone ever delivered something, groceries, or ordered something, or, you know, to their home from Amazon, right? Um, on a daily basis. On Wait, daily is basis. my husband <laughs> listening? <laughs> exactly, yeah. We should tell the husbands to log off and log back in. in yeah, yeah. We really want to get into it. But, but most people have, right? Most people have, and Amazon can deliver to their house, even if it takes a while. If we were having this conversation 10, 12 years ago, if someone told you that they could deliver you groceries in under two hours, you would tell them they were crazy, 
you would laugh them. If we right. were talking about that in a boardroom, they'd be laughing, laughing you out of the room because it was a crazy concept at that time. So why? Why haven't we applied? And many have, right? So this is a little bit of a general statement, but why haven't we pl- applied that technological advancement to health and wellness in a way where we can solve a lot of health conditions that consumers really want solutions for and are so dissatisfied around. And it's not that many aren't, many are, but consumers want things now. They want things fast. There's a new expectation now, right? Is the majority of people live in urban areas. They expect their groceries in under two hours now. And that's a very privileged position to be in in the world. But that's the reality of what's going on in the United States. And that is the consumer expectation. So that's a long-winded way of kind of setting up where we are in culture to say, we said, what's going on with AI? What's going on with technology and science? And how can we accelerate our go-to-market opportunity? How can we consolidate the time that it takes us to go to market with new products, new claims, and new claims on existing products? What else can we say on the things that are already out there that we know are healthy, but we might not have the science and claims to make. So we said, what can we do? So (laughs) we took a look and did a a survey of what was going on around companies that were accelerating that speed. And we realized that there was a big opportunity on the front end to take a look at scientific literature and to take a look at the components in dairy and start to harness AI And what AI does, it it centralizes knowledge. It makes sense of knowledge. It makes connections faster than a human. And we said, how can we apply AI to scientific knowledge that's out there on the components in dairy? And then the evidence that's out there on the beneficial outcomes of ingesting those components. And we started there. And what we found was, we could use AI to read the evidence 10,000 times faster than a human being and make those connections. So 170 scientific journal papers come out every day around the world on a variety of topics. How could one person read 170 papers a day? Not all of those are health and wellness, but hundreds of papers a day, and not all of them are health and wellness and dairy, but hundreds of papers a day. So that's thousands upon thousands and make the connections we need quick enough. They can't. Humans simply can't right. do what machines can do. And what humans can do is validate what the machines did and check the connections that the machines are making. So what we decided to do is create a capability for the entire dairy industry and for farmers to understand what's in dairy, what evidence is out there, and what health conditions can we solve for in the areas we know consumers care about so much and will spend their money in. Yeah. So that that's what we did. Eva, this is so exciting to get this sneak peek into the forefront and what you are working on now and its its projected impact and, and the possibilities. And I want to connect a couple of dots here because you have referenced that you spent a lot of time, you and your team at DMI have spent a lot of time identifying this consumer need first and their dissatis- dissatisfaction with current options Um, for their health and wellness. But could you just take a moment and highlight like the top, you know, three or five things that consumers are looking at when it comes to health and wellness? You had mentioned bone density. uh, But you know, what is that? What does that look like those top concerns of consumers in the health and wellness space? Yeah, bone health is a good example of one across all life stages. We have an aging population. So when you look at what our what our group does at DMI is we look at the trends, right? And it's undeniable around the world, we've got an aging population. And so what we're seeing with consumers is that because people are living longer and we have an aging population, that people are starting to think about aging 
much younger than they used to. I mean, people in their 20s have anti-aging routines and concerns. So look at Vital Proteins as a brand, which is a collagen peptides brand. Really popular brand. They just Yep, in my cupboard. In your cupboard, exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, so, and so, you know, there's evidence around collagen helping um, with joint and, you know, skin, a bunch of different benefits, right? That could that could benefit um, someone who wants aging outcomes, pro-aging outcomes, happy aging outcomes, right? And so they just came out with a campaign about how vital proteins is for every body, right? Because it's not just for um, the older population. And so bone health is a really good example of something that you think you talk to kids about building healthy bones. And then, you know, when you're older osteoporosis, but what about the middle? What about the, t- the people in their twenties to to sixties? We have a huge opportunity to talk about the benefits. We can own the bone health space, you know? And so we have a big opportunity within bone health to talk about the benefits of dairy solving for bone health needs and conditions in addition to joint and and any related conditions. And so the spending by 2028, consumers are going to be spending $44 billion against bone health. 90% of that is in supplements. They're taking supplements for this. Wow. Why? When food is such an incredible source of some of the nutrients we know that help bone health, like calcium, for example, but there are other components in dairy that help bone health and we need to talk about them. So, so that's one, um, is, is bone health is a big area. Another area of focus is absolutely brain health. This is another one across life stages. Of course, we've talked about brain development, but when it comes to aging, brain health, cognition, memory, and then general cognition, focus, and a big one, especially affecting younger generations, because there's really a huge challenge with mental health with Gen Z. And, you know, really across all life stages, especially since COVID, where many were in isolation, lost family members, were affected, um, brain health in general has become a really big topic of conversation. And uh, all a lot of conditions within brain health are conditions that consumers are looking for, from just wanting to focus and have mental energy for my day on the daily to calm benefits you know, to, to memory and, and general long-term brain functioning. So those are just two of, you know, about five that we're focusing on. And Eve, I think it might be worth it to maybe talk about the evolution of some of these trends. I, from a consumer standpoint, I noticed, you know, five, 10 years ago, um, alternatives were such a huge thing being pushed. But I've noticed that, you know, lately in the last, I would say three, four years, whole nutritious food sources have really become more popular. And I I think that this also shows in dairy reports, um, consumer reports, that dairy is becoming back, uh, having that swing back. Do you think that some of what you just touched on is part of that? Or what do you think is driving that shift back to real, real food, real, real dairy. Yeah, absolutely. You are right. And there's a shift back towards real food and real dairy. I think one of the, one of the shifts is consumers are recognizing the importance of nutrient dense foods in their diet. You know, inflation is up and dairy is one of the most nutrient dense foods you could possibly get. Um, Consumers are also recognizing there are a lot of people who are shifting back towards dairy and animal foods who recognize that they're an incredible source that if it's, if it's lacking in their diet, they don't feel as well. They just don't. And it's, it's anecdotal. It's, it's a recognition that whole nutrient dense foods are important. Clean label is still really important to consumers. And there is a huge shift away from processed foods. I mean, many institutions are talking about it. it you would be hard pressed to find a medical institution that's saying that processed foods in the middle of the aisle are better for you than those in the refrigerator and on the perimeter of the store. Um, it, it's it's just hard to deny that fresh whole foods 
are the best foods that you could possibly have in the diet. And consumers are recognizing that. And as there's a bigger focus on health and wellness, they're recognizing dairy as a key source of protein. And they're also recognizing that the removal of anything from a diet is not the way to have proper nutrition. And um, that, that that's just not something that's going to work. I also think that um, the growth of certain dairy options and the recognition of and growth of certain brands such as Fairlife is a great example that provide exactly what consumers want, higher protein, lower sugar, are getting people to see that dairy is providing natural nutrient dense solutions that sustain them. And I think people are recognizing that I think there's fatigue around the recommendations people are receiving from the three G's Google gut, their gut and their girlfriends. And that <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call the three G's and that the three G's aren't going to tell you what your body needs. Guess what? Your body is going to tell you what your body needs. And health professionals are also recognizing that. So you're absolutely right. And a fun trend for you. Um, that popped up, I think it was last year, was a trend back towards whole milk, and it was called Hot Girls Drink Whole Milk. <laughs> um, so if you haven't seen that one, um, it was an article about how baristas were recognizing in big cities that girls were ordering whole milk again because they realized that you know certain other types of products – don't provide the protein they need are spiking their glucose. That's another thing. We could, I could talk about glucose all day and the trend toward glucose, but um, that's another thing. So you're absolutely right. And what's trendy now is to trust that whole nutrient dense foods are good for your body and trust that when you're eating them, you feel better because you do. Yeah. So it's a super enlightening to look at these trends, Eve, and and to just connect a few dots here. So what, what you've articulated in our conversation so far is this work that DMI has been doing in identifying the trends and that consumer need, that consumer desire, that consumer, you know, thirst and hunger, literally for solutions that they can consume for health and wellness. And then taking that and what you are developing on the, the technology side is artifi using artificial intelligence to take the pages and pages upon pages of information and peer-reviewed scientific research around food and health and wellness, and to be able to start to match these things up so that essentially... There's this database, this kind of query, so to speak, uh, that's AI powered that can start to really identify what is it in milk and products that can be derived from milk that can be true solutions to the problems identified at the consumer level. Yeah. Yeah. It's about centralizing knowledge, analyzing opportunity, and then implementing and going to market. And that's what we've done is we've really tried to understand what are these components that we can talk about, right? If there's a trend towards nutrient dense foods, how can we talk more about the nutrients beyond the essential nutrients we know are in dairy today? Because what we know for a fact is now today, there are thousands of molecules in a single glass of whole milk, thousands and we talk about a handful of them, right? And we commercialize a handful of them. What do those components do? And how do they solve for the different health conditions consumers have? And there is evidence out there for certain components that there are hundreds of health conditions that a single component can solve for. So if we know that we already go to market with a certain component, and we know we go to market with a specific benefit or a specific claim in one health area. What if we tripled that? What if we quadrupled that? What if we gave you a hundred different ways to talk about a product that you commercialize? That means you can put a new claim on it. You can expand your product line. That means that you can expand in different categories 
you didn't even think that your product could be in before because you didn't have a system that could identify that your product could do that. And that's what we want. We want to say more about the products that exist today, say, say new things, strengthen existing things that we can say, and then identify new things. That's like low hanging fruit. And then the second is, what about things that we didn't know, components we didn't know, and product benefits that we didn't know, where we can create the next generation of products for the dairy industry to solve for the over 50% of people in this country who desperately want solutions for a variety of health areas. I mean, these people are asking for this, right? And so to have a system that can identify and diversify the understanding of a single ingredient, of a single product, and what it can do is absolutely going to be transformational in the future. Yeah. And, you know, Eve, as you explain the the connections in, in the system and the potential here, is there an example that you might be able to share with us of a specific product or category of product where you were really able to help identify a an, an entirely new opportunity of health and wellness benefit that never was part of the story before. Uh, any good example that you could share just to help us really put into perspective how this all works in, in real time? Yeah. So one of the things that I didn't mention was, yes, we can make new claims and go to market and understand more about an ingredient or understand more about how ingredients deliver on a health benefit. But what about misconceptions about dairy? What about myths? And are those myths true? We know that many of them are not. So let's talk about skin health because this is an area of explosive growth no matter what category you look look into. Nutraceuticals and ingestibles for skin health growing immensely. The skincare, topical skincare industry growing immensely. Even the... Um, prescription, <laughs> the prescriptions that people are taking for their skin health, or even, you know, injectables, for example, growing immensely. So one of the biggest misconceptions about milk or myths, and I can say this with confidence because there isn't evidence to prove this. And the American Academy of Dermatology just came out with their latest dermatology guidelines and this year, they did not say to exclude dairy because there is not conclusive evidence that you should be taking out dairy for your diet, for your skin. So that's one thing that I want to say. But the second is, to answer your question, how can we do that in the capability that we've built and, and the platform that we've built? So what we're able to do is look, look in that area. There are many conditions in skin health, right? You've got acne, you've got eczema, you've got wrinkles, <laughs> you've got pigmentation. If you list off all the things, the problems you can have with your skin, there are many. Um, what we can find is in the area of skin health, what are the beneficial bioactives in dairy that are showing these incredibly positive associations because we're anti-inflammatory. And one of the things that we did find was the beneficial impact of lactoferrin on acne, for example, and scientific evidence associated with that. And lactoferrin is an ingredient we know the industry commercializes. We know it's such a beneficial ingredient in other areas, but we have never talked about lactoferrin and acne as far as I'm aware, right? Never is a big statement, but I can't find um, a media, a news article on this in the United States at all. And so these are some of the stories that we can tell, but also go to market with. I mean, dairy has never, we have never thought about, oh, let's go into skin health. Let's, <laughs> let's go into beauty, right? That would be crazy. But these crazy ideas are volume and value moving ideas that could absolutely transform the industry, transform consumers' understanding of dairy and consumer health conditions, which is the most important thing. Because if we're solving problems for consumers, then we're solving problems for everyone and we're growing. And so that's just an example of 
what do you mean it causes acne? We have this incredible component that exists in a high concentration that helps to mitigate acne, right? And so what, what can we do with that? And so that's just an example of an area we haven't gone into, an area that we haven't talked about and components that we haven't looked at for that specific reason. And, you know, I believe there are hundreds more stories that we can tell around that. So Eve, everything that you shared with us so far, there are so many benefits, not only to consumers, but and to um, those that are marketing dairy products. But what does this truly mean to the dairy producer? And how can they use this information to help their bottom line, help them, you know, communicate with with consumers as well? Yeah, so I would start with the lowest hanging fruit, which is with this capability, we can find additional benefits for existing products that are already on shelf to to move volume and drive growth. So what else can we say about the gallon jug that's on shelf? What else can we say about the variety of products that you have on shelf to grow sales immediately? Now, what else can we say? Let's take a look at the evidence. Let's take a look at the clinical evidence. So that's number one. What are we doing today? You know, And then the second is, how can we find additional benefits of existing ingredients that you commercialize to create different products to go into different markets? And that's coming soon, which is we know you commercialize this ingredient and we're going to find other claims we can make and potentially new products we can make with those claims. And then the third is, what about the future? What about the different health conditions that maybe there's a bit less evidence on, but there's strong evidence on? And that is where DMI is changing our science pipeline to do the science that we need to make those claims in the next couple of years to drive sales and growth for their products. So it's about what can we do today? Let's find new avenues, new claims, drive growth. Let's see what we can do tomorrow with some really promising emerging evidence that we're seeing in the areas we know consumers will buy in and want and go to go to market. And then lastly is how can we help expanding into other markets abroad as well, which I should mention exports and how can we provide the evidence for regulatory um, across the globe so we can enter new markets and immediately grow there with products that we already have that exist and products that we want to drive growth for in the future. So those are just a couple of ways that you know we are affecting the farmer's bottom line and we're protecting the future of trust and sales and making sure that we're driving them now with the capability that can move us faster to the things that we can say, the products we can make and the health benefits we can deliver on. Yeah. And, and Eve, as you, as you go into that detail of, of really how the narrative around dairy is changing and evolving and in your forward thinking work that you're doing every day, the dairy story five years from now could sound and look so much differently than the traditional things that Laura and I have memorized since we were dairy princesses as children. Right. (laughs) Uh, But, but just to give a little bit of a, you know, to, to just put a little perspective uh, into how that plays into the modern day. You know, right here, it's a June Dairy Month as our listeners are tuning into this podcast episode. And this is a time when so many of those in the industry are out there telling dairy stories, reaching out to the community, inviting people to their farms. And so just, you know, futuristically, five years from now, or maybe even starting sooner, what do you think that narrative will look like and sound like And with what you are empowering dairy producers to be able to do to tell a completely different and more compelling story to connect with their consumers, what's that going to sound like then? Well, five years from now, I think that what we will see is a broad spectrum of health and wellness products that dairy will deliver on and a widespread recognition that Dairy has always been and is a critical, essential product that people cannot live without for a variety of reasons. Because the way that the trends are going in five years from now, six out of 10 Americans have chronic diseases. 
you're sitting in a room with 10 people, six of them have chronic diseases. So in five years from now, our goal is that dairy can help to solve for a variety of health conditions that consumers are looking for. And there is just this widespread recognition that not only do we need to purchase dairy products for different health conditions, um, that dairy is uniquely positioned because of the unique components in dairy that do not exist elsewhere to help consumers. Second, I think consumers are always going to enjoy dairy. Cheese, cheese, ice cream, dairy is always going to be a food in the diet that people enjoy and find immense joy from. And joy is a nutrient too. Joy is part of health and wellness. So we talked a lot about health and wellness today, but we can't forget joy. And, and I say that, you know, I say that, but I'm not really joking <laughs> because yeah, well, it, it's important. You mentioned that you mentioned that yes. mental health is such a part of this and part of mental health is finding your joy, finding things that make you happy. Right. And I feel like, you know, cheese could maybe, yeah, be I mean, people. totally <laughs> find joy in ice cream. I mean, thank you for validating its health benefits. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think that, you know, I think people will no longer need to feel permission to eat the foods they know intuitively and will then have health evidence for um, in their diet and, and dairy is that. And, and then I think where are trends going in the next five years, right? We have an aging population. It's how are we serving that population? One of the things that we talk about at DMI is 70% of households today don't have kids. People are having kids later in life. People are living longer. So we are going to take a look at different life stages and, and, and places where consumers are at and making sure that when we look at aging as a trend, like I mentioned, aging isn't just for people 70 plus and providing products for them. It's about talking to those in their 30s and their 40s and even their 20s about how to how do you eat for healthy aging? How do you do that? And so I think it's preparing people, providing products for people across the trends we know are going to impact them, right? People are living longer. How do we support that? How do we support that for you, your family, and future generations? And dairy just has an immense opportunity for those who don't have kids on the young side and for those who want benefits in certain areas. So I also see in five years us really getting those consumers to see that we are a modern solution and that we provide modern solutions um, but that we've always been around and, and we are the most traditional, but also modern and future thinking solution that anyone could have. And that's, um, that's an optimistic view, but I think it is realistic. I really do because consumers want these products, they're dissatisfied and they want dairy to deliver on it. And so in five years, I see the dairy farmer being even more respected and revered as they are today. And I see more sales and growth and I see more consumers recognizing the value of farmers who are providing whole foods and who work so hard um, on the farm to make sure that their cows are healthy and that that translates into these dairy products for consumers. And I think that there's a wider respect for dairy farmers. I've never seen a survey that we've ever done where consumers don't talk about the incredible respect for dairy dairy farmers. And now we got to make sure that we keep driving the solutions in the market. And that's what we're really focused on. So we're excited to keep focusing on that. And I hope that we're on here in five years from now and I have products surrounding me and products surrounding you that I can send you that solve for whatever health condition we want to solve for that day. And I hope that after consuming them all, I will look 10 years younger, be have the brain function from 10 <laughs> years ago also. So I'm just as excited about this future. 
<laughs> and this health and wellness space and uh, and what you shared with us today, Eve, this forward this forward thinking approach to, as you said it before, just really framing up milk as the ultimate health food, but also all of these efforts using science, technology, connecting these dots with consumer trends to continue to drive volume and value for milk. And for that, we thank you and DMI for the efforts that you are doing every day behind the scenes to ensure that there is a positive future for the product that our dairy farmers are working so very hard to produce at the highest level of quality and excellence every single day. And for our listeners, Eve, that would like to connect more or learn more about some of these efforts from DMI, we can include some links in the show notes for that. But is there any easy way for them to connect with the work that you're doing? You know, you can go on usdairy.com, which is DMI's website, to learn more about the work that we're doing. And we'll continue, you know, especially in the health and wellness space, to come out with new news and talk about new results that we're driving, you know, new things in the pipeline. And, you know, hopefully I can come back on with you guys and talk to you about some use cases that we found and, you know, really how we're delivering on that. So excellent. Excited about that. All right. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure having thank you here you. on our our shared show between ST and Up Level Dairy Podcast today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And if you like what you've heard today and want more of it in your ear every week, please take a minute to follow Up Level Dairy Podcast on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. And ST Talks on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and Deezer. Or you can learn more about ST Genetics by visiting our website at stgen.com. Thank you so much for joining us as we celebrate June Dairy Month. ST Talks and Up Level Dairy Podcast are proud to bring you these incredible dairy stories and hope you join us for the next one launching tomorrow. Mm-hmm.